Wanting everybody to love you the way God loves you, but it doesn't work that way because only God can love you the way He loves you for who you are inside. That is why, even with your broken past, God doesn't stop loving you because He believes in you when nobody else believes in you. He knows what you can become, He sees your potential, He sees your capacity. Hola, Moses. Pequeño niño, it's time for you to ask Constable Carlos any question you want. Constable Carlos, how do you keep the peace? Hey, that's why we have things called tasers and batons and I'm joking. I keep the peace like praying, being nice. I am taking care of treasure. This is a teapot from my grandmother and it's over 120 years old. Oh my goodness. Hey Catherine, the theme today is keeping the peace. What does that look like? Let's say my sister takes a book, but she's a baby, right? Right. You shouldn't get mad and fight with her. You should just leave her alone and keep the peace. And they said one to another, Aha, behold, this dreamer cometh. Behold what? This dreamer cometh. Behold Joseph come. This dreamer. I can't hear you. Behold Joseph comes. This dreamer. What did they say? They didn't say Joseph comes. They changed his name. He was no more called as Joseph. They began to identify him by his gift. That means at one point he became one with the gift. That means every time they saw him, they could not see a little 17 year old boy. Every time they saw him, his gift was so loud. And even more making it hard was the fact that the robe of the father's multicolored robe that was a gift from his father was upon him. So it didn't help. <laughs> that the father had favored him. The father's, he had the smile of the father. He was the apple of his eye. That itself created insecurity. And you begin to see, they started calling him the dreamer. They identified him with his gift. I want you to understand this, people of God. People around you don't have the grace to see you through the eyes of God. The way people identify you is by the gift you have. You know, they look at you and say, you know the, the, the lady that drives this car, this model, your your identity becomes the gift that God has blessed you with. And that is not something you need to be shocked with. That is not something that you should break your heart with. You have to remember, people are people. They are not anointed to see things through the eyes of God. So they see you through what? God has blessed you with. So don't judge them for that. Thank them for that. Don't be irritated about it. Understand that it is the favor of God that is causing you to be addressed by your gift. Your gift has now grown to such governance that now it can stand on its own. That is the favor of the Lord on your life. But if you look at the Father, the Father does not identify but what is in your hand. Because what is in your hand was given to you by the Father. So 
the brothers around you, the world around you, they identify you by the gift in your hands. But the Father, He recognizes you by the gift you can become. Some of you got it. How many of you are understanding what I'm saying? There is a difference between both. Joseph has a gift. But to the father, he is the gift. It is our immaturity that causes us to pursue the gift versus becoming the gift by itself. Let me help some of you. Are you with me? Yes. Open your Bibles to the Bible, the, the chapter 18 of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16, please. Man's gift mm -hmm. maketh room for him. A man's gift makes room for him. And what does the gift do? And bringeth him before great men. And brings him before great men. Everybody say this verse after me. It's a very profound verse. Everybody read it out loud. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Aha. Uh -huh. So that means if you have a gift in your hands, there are people that will want to make room for you. Space for you. They will assign a chair for you. They will block a seat for you because you have a gift in your hands. A gift makes room. So many of you have been praying for breakthroughs, but you've not worked on your gift. The other day somebody said, what must I do for a breakthrough in your, to, to get married? I said, work on the gift. Work on the gift. Because you see, it is only God that sees your heart. But everybody sees your appearance. He knows what you can become. He sees your potential. He sees your capacity. That is why, even with your broken past, God doesn't stop loving you because He believes in you when nobody else believes in you. How many of you are understanding what I'm saying? But people are not the same. Human beings are not the same. With human beings, they're looking at what is in your hand. So it is not wrong for you to develop that which is in your hand. Develop it. Be the best at it. Yes. If you're a dreamer, be the best dreamer. If you're a singer, be the best singer. If you're a designer, take courses to become a better designer. If you are a better designer, take more courses till you become the best designer. Ay, 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 ay. Some of you are waiting on God for so long, but God is saying, I've already given you a gift. So say, God, open the, open the doors for me. No, my child, I gave you a gift. The gift is supposed to open the doors. But what are you doing with the gift? How did you sharpen your gift? How much more did you exercise? How much more did you practice? What did you do about your gift? And you keep coming to church and, and saying, ah, I'm building an altar for that. I'm building an altar for this. I pastor lay hands, prophesy. I'm going to get my breakthrough. Yeah, breakthrough came long ago. It was in your hands. How did you develop it? Or did you have excuses of why the gift doesn't work? Impossible. Impossible. I'm telling you, everybody does not have everything, but everyone has something. Look at your neighbor and say, what did God give you in your hands? Now just look away from them and, 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 and just say it out loud so they can hear you, but don't make eye contact because they may not like you after that. So just say it out loud. Did you multiply it? 
Mm. Did you multiply your gift? Or you were too scared and you hid it? Instruction number one, close your gap. Instruction number two, multiply your gift. Multiply your gift. Oh, oh, man of God. Once in a while I see visions. What do you mean once in a while you see visions? Did God give you a gift called once in a while seeing visions? Or did he give you the gift of visions? No, 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 I missed you. I lost you right there. You guys know when to react and when not to react. I caught you. I caught you. Because something poked you right there. One more time. Let me repeat it. Did God give you a gift called once in a while seeing visions? Or did he give you the gift of seeing visions? So if you see visions once in a while, is that God's fault or is that? Sharpen your Some of you are so good with numbers. So good with numbers. The only thing you use that is to brag about it during dinners. Ah, God has blessed me with the grace for numbers. Yeah, yeah. You've been saying that for every dinner. What have you done with that gift? We are waiting for breakthroughs. We're waiting for doors to come. But what have you done with that camera in your hands? How much money have you made? How has the gift multiplied? How have you been faithful? You know, a real mentor, a real father, the way God functions, he will give you one gift, he will give you one responsibility, and he will watch to see the diligence of that one gift in your hands. If you don't be faithful in that one gift, tell me which common sense businessman is going to come again and invest into that same person with more gifts when you have not been faithful with the one gift in your hand and you're still saying, God, give me more. Show me what you have done with that one gift. We want a lot. We want to do more. We want to go more. We want more assignments. But what have you done with that one assignment? Or was it too little? I want you to look back and say, how many assignments have I had? How faithful was I? How efficient was I? How have I multiplied it before I can ask for more? The gift makes room for you. But where God is bringing us is you move to become that gift. So now they can come and take away your robe. They take away the colorful robe that is on you. But they cannot take away the mantle that is inside of you. That is a part of a praying Christian. You find a praying believer. Combine it with understanding. Somebody that prays a lot, always praying, praying, praying. They have the gift of acceleration. Prayer brings acceleration. You're praying, 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 praying. Also, tell me what happens to a car and you step on it and you press the gas pedal and now you're on the maximum speed on the car. There's also danger of crashing. Because prayer is not enough. You need to receive understanding. That is why Daniel prayed and then he woke up in the morning and said, blessed be the God who gives understanding. So all prayer and no understanding is going to give you a crash landing. We need the grace to say, Lord, turn my gift to a giftedness. Let me break it down to simplify it. It's like this, this woman in the kitchen. She's so blessed to cook. The cooking is a gift. Cooking is a 
kept she oh everybody loves coming to their house oh my wife can cook oh come home everybody all the relatives love coming to their house because they know yummy scrumptious food is waiting for you yeah but when all the relatives leave the husband also wants to leave because right after everybody leaves there is a part of this wife that he gets to see <laughs> that others don't get to see so you celebrate the gift but she is not a gift to him don't look at me like that <laughs> your bible says that a nagging wife is better for a man to live on the rooftop it's preferred that he shifts his bed to the top of the roof so she has a gift but she doesn't have the giftedness she's a blessing in her area but in every other areas she's a burden so you're bringing money home and you feel good that as a man of the house you're taking care of the house you have brought food to the table and that is your identity that you have a gift all right the question is not whether you brought food to the table the question is while eating the food is your wife happy while eating that food that you say is a gift to the house is your children in terror around the table around the table don't talk don't move and all the kids are so scared of you you have a gift but you yourself you're not a gift many people are good at having gifts but when you come in do you bring joy can i tell you something being the gift is greater having a gift one more time being the gift because man of god you have one gift you give that and it is spent and it is over but when you are the gift the gift keeps on giving <laughs> ah, i tell you it never ends you become that pop actual blessing to everybody around you it doesn't stop i believe the spirit of god is turning people in this house in this ministry from just being people that carry gifts to being people that give gifts the bible says jesus the son of man came and he gave gifts to men you can't give gifts to men unless you are a gift yourself jesus didn't bring gifts he was the gift so he can give gifts because he becomes an endless source of grace you becoming the gift is greater than having a gift but you know guess what the world celebrates people that have a gift but heaven celebrates people that can become a gift so the brothers are looking at you jealous about the gift you have while god is looking and saying i'm turning him to become the gift so 10 years from now he's so molded he's so matured that he can now sustain an entire nation hey joseph you have a gift of seeing a visions but in the season god is going to mold you with fire Amen. he's going to mold you through these trials the word of god is going to test you and the end of that testing you will go from having a gift to being a gift and when you are a gift you will walk into the prime minister's office now you may not see a vision or give a prophecy but they will begin to benefit from the fact that just by your presence there a rom brokosa just by the fact that joseph was in the kingdom of egypt egypt shall not see famine 
You see, some of you are waiting for one vision, not realizing there are some people, they are the prophecy. Did you see Joseph going into the royal palace and going, oh, thus says the Lord, Mr. Pharaoh, this is what, no, 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 no. He's coming. Now he's no more carrying the gift. He is the gift. The wisdom of God now is inside of him. Now when he opens his mouth, he does not have to say, thus says the Lord. But if he says, as long as I say, there shall be no rain or dew in the land, his words become the prophecy. Elijah didn't say, oh, I was praying for 21 days and the Lord told me for two years. They said, no, 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 no. What I say becomes the prophecy. Because now I'm no more the one having a gift. I am the gift. So you're waiting for the rain to come. But what you don't know is if Elijah comes, the rain has come. Oh, I like that when my father said it better, he has the better superior revelations. I thank God. Someday I hope to grow into that. He once said that, ah, it excited me like never before. He said, when Elijah comes, he carries the season. So when he comes, he brings the season. When he comes, he shifts the season. Lord, take us from playing games in the church and competing with each other and trying to find who is greater. Am I greater? He is greater. Is my brother greater? Am I better? Is who is sitting at the right hand or who is sitting at the left hand? Stop competing and having rat games and begin to become serious about moving from having a gift to becoming. Hey! Most divisions in the church happen because you're comparing the gift in your hands. Why did Papa give him blue? I only got red. Can I get blue and red? Can I get green also so I can feel more special? Instead of that, if you can grow in maturity, a matured son is greater than an immature son with a gift. Stop fighting and arguing about who is more gifted, who has more gifts in their hands, and instead say, Lord, make me a gift. Make me a gift, make me a gift, make me a gift, make me a gift. Lord, this year, let me be so rooted that I don't have to compare myself with anybody else. You know, while I was praying, I heard the Lord say, there are some people that are very hurt because you watched so-and-so receive a gift and you did not receive that gift. You watched somebody else receive a gift and you did not get it. You watched this husband buy this wife such a gift and you said, my husband does not does do the same for me. And your heart is hurting. And I hear the Holy Spirit send me out today to tell you, my child, you may not have received gifts from humans, but I want you to know you are the gift. You are the gift. God is taking you from a place wanting to receive gifts to become to that place where you can now give gifts. I come from the Lord Jesus and I stand in that authority and I say gone are the days when you shall count how many loaves and fish that is in your hands and you will become the one that multiplies it. Yeah. Okay.